Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Appliance Advisors with Yale Appliance. My name is Francesco, joined as always by Dennis. How are you doing this week, Dennis? Doing great. Doing great, friend. So we have some special guests with us this week. As you know, we're always super excited here to be talking outdoor cooking and grills, and we're really excited uh, today to have the business development team from Urban uh, from uh, Kalamazoo joining us here. And we're joined by Ryan Bloom, as well as um, uh, Russ Falk, who is the head product designer as well at Kalamazoo. So really looking forward to uh, digging into some of the, the, such the innovative products that you have, um, talking about all the different outdoor products, cabinets, really digging into the product line here and seeing what kind of makes Kalamazoo so special. So thanks for joining us this week. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's exciting to bring these guys in. They um, certainly are kind of at the top of the top of the the food chain, you know, product forward when it comes to grilling. And and uh, it's it's a brand that I have some personal experience with um, that it's just this this is great to have you. And, and it means generally we have these that it's starting to warm up here in Boston and we'll take it. We were 42 yesterday, but we're, we might hit 70 today. So we're right wow. at the cusp of of really getting out there. Although in Boston, you know, much like I know, Ryan, you're from Canada and, and out in yeah. Chicago, Russ, but but true grillers grill year round. I mean, you know, we get out there in the snow. You, there's right. no excuses for the, you know. For Shovel the on a path. Out. We're going yeah. out there. For yes. sure. Very true. Very true. All right. So let's get into it. What do we got today, Fran? All right. Football. So the first question we want to ask is really, you know, what makes Kalamazoo such a high performance grill brand? Just what are some of the qualities of Kalamazoo? Um, you know, a, a lot of the performance, especially when we're talking about the hybrid fire grill, which is what you have on the screen there. It's the product that Kalamazoo is best known for. A lot of that performance comes down to the sheer versatility of the product. Of course, we've got very high quality, uh, great materials, great components, things like that. But these grills are able to sear in any place on the grill grate without a dedicated searing burner. They're able to roast beautifully because of the amazing convective heat we're able to generate with our deep mm -hmm. firebox. And then, of course, the, the icing on the cake is the actual hybrid capabilities. So not only are these very high performance gas grills, but they can also ch cook with charcoal. They can cook with wood. You can do low and slow traditional American barbecue. I love to do wood fired rotisserie. So a lot of it really comes down to the versatility of the product and the quality that we put into it. Uh, when you have your first opportunity to open and close the lid on a Kalamazoo hybrid fire grill, you can feel the difference from that moment. Excellent. Yeah, Fred, Fred, do you have a picture of that? I think we have a picture of the hybrid. Actually, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's so for people, we say it in the business, but so speak to this, Russ. What are we seeing here? What does this really look yeah, So between uh, where the food is cooked and where the burners lie is what we call the hybrid fire grilling drawer. And that grilling drawer, when you're cooking with gas, you leave it empty. It's your heat diffusing layer. Uh, but when you're cooking with wood or charcoal, you're able to load up that drawer. The burners down below get the fire started for you. You can then leave the burners on. I'll frequently put in a nice thin load of charcoal. So I get that intense dry heat you get from charcoal, that little bit of flavor from charcoal. And I'll leave my burners running on low so I don't use as much charcoal during my cook. So I kind of get all the best of both worlds. And below those burners is a very expansive firebox. So our firebox um, extends really low. That creates all the recovery air below the burner system, below your heat source that you need to get that great convective heat that I'm talking about. Um, and it's why the hybrid fire grills stand on their own leveling legs. So our built-in grills can be a little confusing to some people in the market. They do all stand on the ground and that's because that's grill all the way down almost mm -hmm. to the floor level, which is where the deep ash pan is. So. That hybrid fire grilling drawer is just a real, real treat to those who enjoy live fire flavors, who want to experiment with charcoal, who want to do wood fired rotisserie like me. Uh, it's kind of key to the whole system. Yeah. So you can just to drill that home. It does have gas. You can have a natural gas or propane gas mm -hmm. um, as well. That, and that will help light the, the, the wood or the charcoal. So you, if you're in a pinch and you're going fast, you can just use straight gas mm -hmm. and, 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 get right past this draw. But if you're, to your point, really doing rotisserie and really getting at it, you can use charcoal flavored wood, right? Am I yes, correct? for sure. And the the burners um, that we use, the, the primary cooking burners in the hybrid fire grills are cast stainless steel. And they're shaped almost like the roof of a house mm. is what I like to think of it as. And our burner ports are all under the eaves of the house. 
So you've got this cast stainless steel burner that's designed to shed the ash and anything else that's falling on it from that hybrid fire cooking door. And, and I, I will say, you know, I said I had some experience with, with the brand. And while I don't personally own a Kalamazoo, I have used one. And really, I'll tell you, this came out of we were so excited to get it. And this was years ago. And uh, we, we have some labor and memorial days where in retail we still have to work. So part of the, the one thing is I'd go in and, of course, everyone's working hard and, and we cook for the staff. You know, we grill out for them. Um, and I said, you know, heck, let's grill on this Kalamazoo. Now, not a self-professed grill expert like you, Russ, who really knows what the heck they're doing. I'll burn a burger. Um, so I, we put burgers on and we loaded it up and it was nothing special. I'm talking store just straight. We didn't even use the firebox. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, we didn't even use the, the wood and, uh, I'm, I cook these burgers and I get distracted easily. And next thing I know, they've been out there seriously for probably 40 minutes. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, everyone's hungry. We're going to ruin these things. S swear to you. This is not telemarketing. There's none of those things. They were not pink in the middle because they were cooked, right? They were the juiciest, the best bur burger I had ever had. And that is that firebox. We should have probably teed up a picture for that. But if you see that firebox and Russ says that grill truly goes to the ground, it is massive. But the, keeping that convect heat and that, all that heat and moisture in and that lid being so easy to open but heavy, well-constructed. I mean, the burger, seriously, just something as simple as a burger was amazing, you know, so. That's producing That's all the flare ups and things like that, you know, because you have that such, you know, we've all done it a million times. Like you said, you walk away, you come out, you see the smoke everywhere, this fire in the grill, because, you know, the deep firebox also being able to reduce a lot of those flare ups. And because, you, like you said, you have some of that separation there from that, from the grates, the way that where the fire is actually coming from and being able to reduce some of that as well. Truly, truly unique in, in the market for sure. Yeah. And where the, where the grease collects is almost two feet below the grill grates mm -hmm. down in the down in the collection bin so yeah. it makes a big difference excellent so we kind of right. already talked about this next question but anything else you'd say is like what's a unique cooking story with kalamazoo well we i mean we've been uh we've been at it for a long time and if, if we're we're talking about uh our history kalamazoo outdoor gourmet started off as kalamazoo sheet metal back in 1906 and we wow. were a family owned specialty sheet metal fabrication shop doing works for uh, architects, things like that, custom work, and also doing um, a lot of stainless steel equipment for the dairy processing in industry and for the pharmaceutical industry, which is big around the Kalamazoo area as well. And that's where our craftspeople really cut their teeth on the quality of their welding, the quality of their finishing and all of that. In the mid 1990s, the great grandson of the founder of Kalamazoo Sheet Metal uh, was a he was a creative soul and he wanted to start producing grills so they came up with some incredibly distinctive grills back then and in 1998 they launched what was called the dual fuel grill and it really is the first of our hybrid fire grills so the hybrid fire grill is celebrating its 25th birthday uh this spring uh and it was just really revolutionary in the, really revolutionary in the market uh very original very distinctive um, they didn't stop there, uh, actually launched a full modular outdoor kitchen system that they called the eccentric series back then. And it was the first stainless steel outdoor kitchen cabinets, the first weather tight outdoor kitchen cabinets. So we've been embracing the outdoor kitchen space for more than 24 years. That's excellent. So yeah. who would you say just overall, who was an ideal fit for the Kalamazoo grill? Well, Ryan, why don't you grab this one? Yeah, I think that we find that there are two kind of uh, customer typologies. There is first the customer who simply wants the very best product in the market and has a tremendous connection to the value of craftsmanship. The little things that the average person may not see, a weld line, for example, those that may not be seen by the average person, but it is something that goes through tremendous passion in the same way that there are people who have connections to uh, a handbag or a, or a car or a, uh, a lacquer new range, for example. People have a tremendous appreci appreciation for craftsmanship and artisan, not mass production. These are not products that are with distributors sitting on shelves. 
each Kalamazoo product is handmade for the person who orders it. And we'll talk, Russ, we'll, we'll expand mm -hmm. on that. This is mm -hmm. not an in-stock product. So that's the first typology. And the second, and in many cases, these two overlap, is the individual that has just tremendous appreciation for a level of performance in product that is second to none. And one of the things in, in talking about the hybrid fire grill to mention or to add, what I have, and I am a Kalamazoo customer long before I was involved in the company, I've, I've had a Kalamazoo grill for many, many years, and I'm, I'm a loyal fan of it. Um, what's incredible about it is it is something that helps someone who's passionate about outdoor cooking realize their dreams or their passions. It's limitless where an only gas grill or an only charcoal grill has by virtue of single fuel or typology, certain limitations. This product has no limitations, whether it's rotisserie, baking, roasting, convection, charcoal, wood, in any, the permutations are into the millions. And I love that because it allows someone who is passionate about cooking either at time of purchase or as they grow using it to never have an end point at what they can do with the product and that is limitless and those are really the two types of customers and in many cases they're one and the same mm -hmm. but we see certain distinction in those as well and i really enjoy when i hear from our clients how the grill has raised their cooking game and they're doing things they've never done before and a, a common thing that i hear from clients is i won't go to a steakhouse anymore because it mm. doesn't compare to what i've learned to do at home and and it's just yeah. it's wonderful to to hear those those kinds of stories from from our clients yeah and you know i mean i will say i can say firsthand you guys that really do stand behind that i mean you know, Ross, while head of design is also a, a grill master. And, mm -hmm. and so it's not, you know, it's not like, hey, we drew this pretty picture, but does it work? And and even before Russ and I were talking a little before the show about um, how they still, and I think it's so great, stay connected to, you know, the Russ, while you talk about the show you do, where you really, you're continuing to gather feedback from customers that have a Kalamazoo today, what they like, what might be able to be improved, what they want to do and kind of gives you some inspiration on maybe how to improve, what's the next, what's the next thing to think about. Yeah. And yeah, Dennis was asking me where we, you know, where some of the ideas come from, how do we decide what's next? And we do a, uh, we do it monthly. We call it grill masters corner. Uh, we try and keep it to a small group. So it's first come first serve for our clients. So it's a good perk of being a Kalamazoo client and it's uh, between 15 and, and 20 people. And we're just talking on a zoom call and they're asking me any grilling questions, cooking questions, smoking questions uh, that they have about their products. And, you know, we get into features they like to see, features they love that they already have. And, and so some of what's next comes from to the clients directly. And it's honestly my favorite part of my job is, is talking to the clients about cooking. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and I, I, I just it struck me because, you know, so many times you see as companies grow, as your company has has grown, um, it's still stuck to its roots of the customer and how it was first produced, you know, and I think Ryan was talking about that in welding. And there's a photo coming up, I think Fran has of someone doing some welding. But that sounds so simple, like, OK, well, no, these are artists, artists that are doing this uh, artisans and, and, and they actually sign the sign the grill when they're done. That's how serious they are about and their pride gone into it. And I think, you know, as I think about the grill space in the years that I've been in the business, I think it's gone really one of two ways. Either it continues to be a value engineering proposition where they're continuing to try to say, how can we eke a little bit more profit out of this product? And maybe they will make sacrifices to where products are produced or some of the qualities of the metals and materials. And and then there's there's folks like yourselves that um, certainly I'm sure that would be ideal to get every product down less expensive, but it will never come at the sacrifice of the quality and the cooking story that you've kind of built. And I think that's the test. It's yeah. I mean, the, the Kalamazoo, a Kalamazoo grill is definitely an investment. Um, and that that's where we are in the market, but it, it is purely a direct function of what it costs us to build the product. And we, you know, we, work with the highest quality materials we put all the effort in to make sure we've got beautiful seamless welding the product is practically indestructible our most popular um grill is the medium-sized built-in hybrid fire grill so that is a 38 inch install with 
that thing weighs more than 450 pounds and it's wow. all stainless steel brass and bronze it's just it we invest so much into building one and then yes it is an investment yeah. at the other end yeah when you see how a kalamazoo comes, comes how a kalamazoo even comes shipped to you i mean just that alone just the the, the uh, to protect this unit um and and i will say i know we have another question coming up and ryan i'm sorry if i cut you off i tend to do oh, that a lot god bless <laughs> fran uh, but i will say uh in that same vein um you know we'll talk about some of the because uh, the metal quality is something right. when we're talking about an investment it is an investment and you know i i've you know i think all of us have been a, a probably at some point in our life spent good money after bad you know you at the time you spent it because it just seemed to be could do too good of a deal and you end up having to do things over two and three times because it was you know mm -hmm. yeah well yeah. and then no question a little bit too good Sorry, no, 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 you're going to cut them off, Fran. Come on. I know. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm taking after you. <laughs> Good. I, I think what we're talking about, and Russ mentioned, and Dennis, so did you. I, this is a guiding principle or a cultural philosophy at Kalamazoo. We don't think about things in terms of, okay, the market has products at this price point. Here's where we need to be because the dealer needs to make this. And we don't think about it cost down. We think about, first of all, not just is there market potential for this product, but also, or more importantly, the guiding, is this going to enhance people's outdoor cooking and entertaining lives and experience? If it checks that box, first and foremost, then it goes through Russ's development process, which, which is not, I need to hit this price point. It's how do we make the very best, no compromise? How do we pay the people in our plant and factory a wage that is close to, if not double the industry norm? How do we do all of these types of things? Because we know that our customer, and we know there's a very finite number of them, we're not in La La Land, it is true, but we know that the customer who appreciates this level of care and vision for brand and quality is going to appreciate in what we do. And that's down, you mentioned the packaging, it's not just how about how it's going to arrive. We also know there's a very good chance that crate is sitting in the eye line or the sight line of the homeowner before it gets installed. In the same way that companies put a lot of care into the packaging on a consumer, it's part of the experience. And we think about that because the grill master's corner is a perfect example. We are not in the transaction business where we want to sell a grill and say, thank you. We want to be in the journey business. The average Kalamazoo customer has multiple homes with multiple kitchens. Kalamazoo products are now being put into wills as heirlooms from father to son or, or mother to daughter. This is the connection to the brand and the product. And we take that responsibility very seriously. And it's really in, it's in our essence in everything that we do. They're not buzz, they're not sort of bumper stickers. They are the core beliefs of the company. That's great. Well, well said. Yeah, no question. Thank you for that. Insight. The test. I mean, just that build quality, you talk about the weights, and we're going to get into some of the individual parts and pieces, like the grates alone. Sure. I mean, those have some significant weight, and we'll talk about those <laughs> a little bit mm -hmm. too. Sure. You know, we've talked a lot about the grills, and you've mentioned the cabinets, and certainly the grill is a huge the centerpiece of an outdoor kitchen, but you do have so much more to offer. How does Kalamazoo go about really helping customers design their outdoor space, but also even helping, I would say, helping our salespeople and helping those customers get those ideas and really creating a, an outdoor space that a customer is going to love for years to come. Yeah. Well, I'll jump on, on, on this one. Uh, you know, if you look at outdoor kitchens, they are still a very fairly new phenomenon for so many people. We see countless examples of people who have worked with design professionals on the most detailed, beautiful, exquisitely laid out and produced indoor kitchens. And there's been a bit of a historic gap leading to the outdoors. And this is where Kalamazoo's team design support and services is there not just to help with products, but help with design cohesion, layout, understanding the ergonomics, the physical space. What is the relationship physically and aesthetically between the indoor and the outdoor. 25 years ago, it didn't matter as much. Today, mm -hmm. the separation visually between indoor and outdoor is almost none. Even in places like Chicago and Montreal and Boston with harsh winters, we have glass, we have nano walls, we have a lot of visual and design connectivity. So the appearance and the aesthetic of the kitchen outdoors 
is continuing to be really, really important and at the top of the list as more design professionals embrace this outdoor category where it's not a barbecue anymore. It's a kitchen outdoors that has a relationship with how we cook and how we entertain. And that's a huge part of Kalamazoo's philosophy. It's how do we make the very best products with the most spectacular and lifelong customer experience? But how do we support people to help them make the informed decision on layout, on cabinetry, on what needs to be waterproof, on all of these things so they can really not, Dennis, as you mentioned, say, you know, if I had just taken that extra couple mm. of hours, I would have had a much, and then you have that regret. And we're trying to avoid that regret by spending the time to make sure that every single one of a kitchen project that has Kalamazoo's products in it are delivering the type of aesthetic and enjoyment quotient that we want for our customers. And it's really important. Yeah, that's great. So, I mean, basically there, the customer could come into a showroom like ours or their local Kalamazoo showroom and work directly through that salesperson with with your staffs uh, at Kalamazoo to, and with the professional trades. Because I think, Ryan, you said it earlier, and you know, it, it's it's really obvious to me, but it, but it just makes so much simple sense that you know, with with the outdoor explosion and people really wanting to slow down and enjoy things and, and those outdoor spaces just being an extension of their home now, it just kind of flows out to it many times that you would hire a professional kitchen designer to help you with cabinetry and all the design elements of that space. So why wouldn't they want help with this design team? And that's all you guys do is outdoor grills and cabinets to, to, to support this area and make it happen. Um, is really, and, I think, great. And that is exactly the essence of what we're talking about, which is, you know, in most cases, a, a homeowner who's building or renovating an indoor kitchen is working with one or sometimes more design professionals to realize the vision of what that cooking and entertaining space can and, and will be. Well, we think that the outdoors should be just as important just as invested in and just as thoughtful which is why kalamazoo has a team of unbelievably experienced and wickedly passionate people for outdoor kitchen design and will support homeowners our dealer partners and the professional partner community designers architects landscapers with not only pretty pictures but all of the technical information they need for the most seamless possible implementation gas lines electrical counter space where the tongs go if i'm using wood where do i store it all the little things that make the experience very large and very joyful are the things that we think about and it's a service we provide with great pleasure and we do it all the time and in terms of supporting our design partners um you know one of the ways that i'd like to put it is we have almost two thousand SKUs. So I don't expect any designer, landscape architect to really learn the system the way we know the system. So we're there to support them. And every kitchen actually goes through a final review process by one of our engineers, not by the design team, but by the engineering team as well to look for any issues and mark things up. So it's a very yeah. thorough process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I can attest to how detail oriented that is. And I'll tell you, I always tell like our salespeople too, make sure you talk to Kalamazoo, make sure you review the design with them. Cause it is like, you have a lot of those little skews, but they are so detailed, not only to what the customer thinks they want, but just coming up with so many different ideas and maybe something that the customer hasn't even ever thought about laying out the kitchen and being able to really get down to every little detail and every skew. It really is a great service that you provide there. Yeah, and this is a great shot. Actually, there's a lot to look at here if you really stop for just a moment. And the obviously, you see the hybrid fire grill to the left and mm -hmm. built in with Kalamazoo uh, cabinetry. And, and you know, we were talking earlier, the integration of the cabinetry, the fact that they clip together, don't even have to bolt together, makes it really easy. I can speak to a showroom where we have this gaucho and, um, you know, you guys came out with this great new hybrid uh, top, if you will, to go more into a built us uh, of uh, built-in application and we want to modify and add freshen up some displays and the ease of working with the Kalamazoo cabinets was really nice you know because it was really easy to disassemble add a couple of components we actually made one smaller and another one bigger and it wasn't the end of the world to do any of that it was actually quite easy so maybe you can just speak to what we're looking at here because that big thing with the wheel always grabbed my eye and again I told you I am not a grill master but I make an awesome burger on a Kalamazoo grill 
But the minute I saw that in Chicago, I immediately said, we're putting one in the showroom. And, and sure enough, we did. Yeah, that's our Argentinian style wood fired grill. We, we call it the gaucho grill. It is uh, my favorite thing in the world to cook on. Uh, it does have a powerful gas starter system. Uh, it'll get a wood fire going in about five minutes for you, but it is a wood fired cooker. You can put charcoal in there and all that, but it's reason for being is, is wood fired cooking. Um, the grill grates uh, sit in that rack. You can also run rotisserie in there. You can remove all of the grill grates and go full width on the rotisserie or combination like you see in this picture. Um, it's, uh, it's just a, it's, it's an amazing uh, it's an amazing piece of kit to cook on. Yeah. Uh, and it's really, you know, it's, uh, one of the things I always find myself talking about is it's it, it can seem intimidating, but it's really easy to use um, because you can always raise that grill rack up higher for more gentle heat as you're dealing with your stages of fire. But the real key um, that I encourage people to do is experiment with multi-zone fire. So don't just fill the whole thing with wood and have one temperature. Build a multi-zone fire so at any given height that you raise or lower that grill rack, you actually have three different temperatures. You can cook with an offset fire. Yeah, and to envision this, I mean, you guys have a ton of great, you know, that big, large wheel you see that actually, you actually rotate that, and that's what raises that up and down, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many great resources you have on the Kalamazoo website as well that actually show this stuff live being used, so the assets. So if you're on and you're watching and, you you, you know, you're, you're getting it and you're intrigued, but you didn't have your aha moment, you know, certainly Kalamazoo is a wealth of knowledge in there um, in terms of really – you know, some of the assets you've built on, online for folks to really, really experience it a little deeper, even even remotely. Yeah, we try to uh, we try to provide as many resources of, as we can to make sure that people are able to get the most enjoyment out of our products and out of their kitchens. Great. What do we have next, friend? So where exactly are your grills made? And is it true that craftsmen specifically are working on these grills? Uh, it, it's definitely true. They are very handmade. It is more akin to fabrication than it is to manufacturing. I told you our roots were back in sheet metal fabrication, and we are still fabricating these grills. Um, so they are made in Kalamazoo, Michigan, right along the Kalamazoo River. Um, our grills, you know, we build them to order Everything's built to order and ships directly to homes all over the world for the most part. Occasionally, we'll ship it to to a dealer partner who does their own deliveries. But most of the time, it leaves our door, goes directly to the to the home, often the job site at that point with a big project going on. Um, but the the biggest batches that we do are batches of sixteen. The most common batches we do are eight. So this is not an assembly line at all. Uh, and our craftspeople sign every every grill that, that they make. And they take a lot of pride in that. Um, and I know you've got a photo of uh, somebody doing some welding. Yes. Um, it is photo. all hand welded and hand finished um, by human beings who are true, true craftspeople. Um, especially the welders and finishers they are they are the key to that seamless look that that monolithic feeling you get from from the lid of a kalamazoo hybrid fire grill is thanks to those people and and the skills that they've honed over the years absolutely yeah. so we can we did have a photo I'm not sure where where the photo went but i can certainly attest to it there, there we go there it is perfect <laughs> uh, and ryan mentioned uh the that you know part of our a uh, core philosophy is taking good care of our people. That welder, that's Bobby. Bobby uh, was a welder for years at Kalamazoo. Uh, he moved on to other roles in between, but he is actually our plant manager. He runs the entire operation in Kalamazoo now. Excellent. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. Next question. You know, there's so much made about obviously all the parts and the unique features of the Kalamazoo grill. And one of them that we always talk about are the grates themselves. Why are these grates so unique? What are the different textures and what do they do? Um, they are, the, the, the grates you see there in the photo are laser cut from quarter inch thick stainless steel. And we do that because of how well it holds the heat, how great it is for browning the food. And we do different patterns that are 
optimized for different styles of cooking. We gave them very simple names, uh, but you're not, they don't tie the name to, I can only do this with it. So on the left on the screen, you've got our meat surface. It's the most wide open pattern, giving you the most exposure to the flame. In the middle, you've got our fish surface, which is the tightest pattern, the least exposure to the flame and the most support for the food. So it was developed for supporting delicate white fish fillets, things like that. And on the right, you have our vegetable pattern. The vegetable pattern is very close to the meat pattern. It's just uh, tighter cutouts and it's specifically sized. So asparagus and green beans don't fall through. You don't have to use those grilling mm. baskets. You can throw them right on the grill grate. Uh, you get perfect browning. You get the quick cook um, without worrying about losing any of them or uh, having to build an asparagus raft with uh, <laughs> the blue skewers, things like yeah, that. Yeah. We all used to do when we were learning to grill. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also really versatile. Uh, so for example, my go-to surface for grilling burgers, like Dennis was talking about, is actually the veggie grate because it mm. has more contact area. So I get quicker browning without having to cook it as long. And on the fish surface, I like to do angry onions. I like to do cut up the heat of vegetables, grill them that way because those aren't going to fall through. You can even do lightweight stir fry um, where you're letting some of the liquid fall off. So you're still grilling. You're not sauteing. But you can do anything on any of these surfaces and they hold a lot of heat. And because they hold so much heat, because they're so heavy, food is less likely to stick to them. Uh, you get better browning more quickly. Uh, and we also have one that's not pictured that we call the plancha surface. So if you want to do griddle cooking, you want to do pancakes, you want to do eggs, you want to do bacon. Um, I even do uh, shrimp skewers on the plancha surface. It's solid. Yeah. And I think it's it's really cool to know, you know, even on these grates, people can go so far as to put their business logo and get it etched mm -hmm. in, laser cut into one. Or, or your initials or and, yeah, and CRs, number one yeah. dad if it's a gift from the kids. Uh, <laughs> yes, we can yeah, customize them. And, and I'll also say, you know, again, up here in the Northeast where it does get cold in the winter, and, and we did joke, but really you grill year round if you grill. Um, you know, the retention, you can't make light of the of the thickness of the metal and the material because it will hold the heat in a really cold environment, which is so critical mm -hmm. in these colder environments uh, in, in periods, in those periods where you need that heat retention to continue to have that food sear, or brown or not just have that massive fluctuation when you open the, the lid for the moment. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really, it's really well done. Cool. Thank you. So one thing we've kind of heard about here over the last couple of years, and a lot of the Kalamazoo products are made with this marine grade stainless steel. Mm. What does that actually mean? And why is that important to a customer? So what it means, uh, marine grade stainless steel is uh, less likely to corrode. So stainless steel is stain less uh, and it comes in not stain proof, not corrosion proof. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes in different grades. Um, the lowest level grade, if you were to look at a stainless steel grill in a big box store, it might be 400 series. That's going to have more carbon in it than 300 series. Uh, 300 series is the, the standard that you see at the high end. 304 is very common. It's what your silverware is made of, sometimes referred to as 18.8. When you get into marine grade, then we're talking 316 grade alloy, and it's got more chromium. It's got less carbon. Kalamazoo uses what's called 316L. That's the particular alloy that has even lower carbon content. And it's just all about maximizing the corrosion resistance of the product. Um, so everything we make with one small exception, which is the ice machine, is available from Kalamazoo in marine grade stainless steel as an upgrade. It's a popular upgrade, gives you good peace of mind. But I like to uh, try and explain how Kalamazoo kind of goes one step further. It's not just about the grade of steel. It comes back to that welding and finishing. It goes all the way back to our experience in the dairy industry and the flawness, the flawless finish where there's no little pits in the well, there's no gaps. All of that pays dividends when we're talking about going to the marine grade product because there are less crevices. It's easier to clean. The easier, the more you can keep your product clean, the better off it's going to be from a corrosion standpoint, from a salt spray standpoint. Couple that with 316L and you have a very, very fine product for coastal installations or even sometimes next to swimming pools and things like that can have, can have corrosive effects even if you're away from the ocean. Yeah, and we can speak to that. I mean, our Dorchester store is on the water. I mean, the water's right across the road and we've had a Kalamazoo outdoor that we've cooked on for years and, 
you know, aside from the spring, you know, cleanup you'd give to any grill quickly, it looks as good as the day we put it in. And, uh, you know, for us, we would, we, I can't even count the amount of times where people have spent really good money on, on other brands or not even within those brands, if they had the option to spend a little bit more for the Marine grade, it is, it is more expensive but so wasn't the masonry you put it in or the application you did. And to that end, if you're buying this grill, this is not a maybe a Weber grill or one of these other grills you buy today that lasts as long as it lasts, you know, five, six, seven years. And you throw it on, you go buy a new one. This thing is made to stand the test of time. So good money after bad long term makes a lot of sense. And uh, I, I would I am a, if anyone's putting it near the water, I literally almost always want to say to the salesperson, can I come down and talk to that customer? Because when something happens to it, guess who they want to talk to? It's it's Fran, it's myself and and say, why didn't anyone recommend it? So we really want to make sure if they've thought that through. I think it's 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 a very strong consideration for most And it's people. not just the sheet metal, it's the hardware, it's the handles, everything is upgraded to 316 steel. Correct. Correct. So Excellent. go on for days there. Think about it. <laughs> So talk to us a little bit, and we've kind of gone into this a little bit as well, but talk to us about some of the most unique products Kalamazoo has. You know, we talked about the gaucho already, but you have the smoking cabinet, pizza ovens, those sort of things. Uh, yeah, for sure. We, we did talk about the gaucho, and, and it is one of the things that comes to mind for me first when we talk about distinctive and unique products. But we also have a class of one product. You're looking at it there in its freestanding format on wheels. Mm -hmm. But the real reason we developed this, this gravity-fed smoker cabinet, that it runs on charcoal. It does competition-grade barbecue, but it disappears in your Kalamazoo outdoor kitchen. The door to the smoker looks just like one of our refrigerators. You can't tell what you're looking at, but it is a real live fire competition grade barbecue smoker and it's under counter. Uh, and uh, it took uh, it took us about five years to, to develop it, to make it work in that form factor, to make it fit in and look like it needed to look, but also cook the way we wanted it to cook. And it has exceeded my wildest expectations from a for, 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 performance standpoint. It's a very gentle, very even heat, and it'll run for up to 24 hours on a single load of charcoal. It's just fantastic. So it's distinctive. Uh, our Kamado style cooker, which we call the Shokanine, mm -hmm. uh, we basically tore up the rule book when it came to Kamado style cookers. So it is a very unique product. Uh, it is insanely efficient as well. It has two full inches of insulation throughout, uh, and it looks like a beautiful furnishing for your for your patio it doesn't look like you expect a kamado style cooker to, to cook and it is incredibly versatile it's one of our most versatile cooking products yeah i mean that's choking and i don't know fran did we have a photo of that we may not but either way i will tell you that you know when when i was told hey come on by the kalamazoo booth we're gonna un un unveil this new kamado style grill i said okay another kamado I mean, <laughs> which which egg is this a red egg a green egg a pink egg like what are we doing here it and is then a... I saw this thing. This is honestly, this picture, as cool as it looks, yeah. it is beautiful. I mean, it really is up close. It's unbelievable. That is a solid Ipe wood frame with a stainless steel body and interior. Um, it has so many features that really help the, the cook enjoy using it. Every level of grill grates, fire grates, all of that flip up and stay in position. You don't have to remove them to get down in there. And it has a unique cross flip there you can see one of the cooking grates flipped up so you can get to the fire and then you just fold it back down into place uh it is it's a it's a lot of fun to to cook on and i i touched on the fact that it's got two full inches of, of insulation what that does is it helps it maintain really really even temperatures uh, when you hook it up to a, a wireless barbecue system so you can monitor the temperature on your phone you can see the graphs it is just so steady it actually holds as steady a temperature as uh, as an indoor electric oven which is cycling wow. up and down around your target temperature this has almost no cycling up and down and part of that is the the insulation so it's a lot of fun and you mentioned the pizza oven and and uh, she passed a picture of the pizza oven there we actually way back in 2006 basically invented the countertop gas fired outdoor pizza oven category now it's exploded pizza ovens are so popular but uh the the pizza oven from kalamazoo is truly special we call it the artisan fire pizza oven it is optimized 
around delivering perfect Neapolitan style pizza. It's got that big open flame at the back. And then you see it's got two knobs on the front. It has a separate burner down below the cooking deck. The primary heat comes from the big open flame at the back. That's what radiates down and browns your toppings, melts your cheese, blisters your crust. And the heat from below is balanced independently so that you get the crust done to that perfect doneness, that perfect amount of browning and blistering without overcooking. You can balance them very easily. It's easy to learn how to use. It's quick to preheat, and it'll turn out a Neapolitan-style pizza in about two minutes. But the way you can balance the heat, the way you can use it, it's it's perfect for roasting vegetables, roasting fish. I like to do cedar plank cooking in there. We bake bread in there. It's it's a it's a real joy to have in your outdoor kitchen. A real real nice piece to add. Yeah, I, I have ba- I have uh, you know you cooked in that um, with made bread and some of the things you talked about. I mean, I think the important part for me is when people see the gr- pizza ovens, and there are there are a lot of them on the market. And they get so excited. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand or aren't educated to recovery time in a pizza oven as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pizza ovens that are out there that you may find that, hey, it's great. Your first pizza was pretty good. But then you got to wait another 15 minutes for the temperature to recover to cook your next one. And how do you know what people think about these things are thinking about entertaining and multiple guests. And I don't know, no one wants to probably cook pizzas for the next three hours while you feed the, you know, eight or 10 people that are there or however many people. Um, I was very impressed with the two heat sources in this when we used it on just, you know, it's a workhorse. You, you can cook a pizza and you can keep going. And uh, the, the product came out unbelievable. So I just we get that a lot again. On our side of thing, you know, selling Kalamazoo as well as other brands, we see both sides to it. And for us, it's all about education. And when those customers aren't properly educated to why you'd, you'd buy one brand over the next or why this costs that, and that, you know, uh, I think when I think of pizza, you know, you generally, you want to keep cooking them. You don't want to wait. Mm-hmm. So just something to know. It's, it's. And pizzas are such coming a, back to, oh, go ahead, Brian. No, I just wanted to, I mean, uh, it's wonderful uh, working and being, uh, you know, partners with Russ because he's he's extremely humble. But what's amazing about nothing will leave Kalamazoo that doesn't have the finest performance available anywhere. That's our benchmark. But at the same time, we also know that you shouldn't have to compromise on beauty and aesthetic to have wonderful performance and vice versa. So we won't make anything that's just pretty if it doesn't perform well and and vice versa. And I think Russ has a tremendous amount of experience, skill in blending those two very important factors. You mentioned it even with pizza oven, you know, most pizza ovens on the market and and obviously there are there are others boast high heat, 900 a thousand getting but the beauty of this, of course, it is the world's finest pizza oven, but we try to make products that are can do lots of different things and mm. not be limited to just pizza. It's full spectrum. So you can do cookies at 275 degrees just as easily. We want people to be able to explore and play with things, and you need to be able to have temperature variants and, and ways to do that. And this is an example where there are no Kalamazoo products products that are pigeonholed for it's only for one thing Mm -hmm. that's the idea the romantic idea of exploration with recipes and trying and perfecting that's part of the journey that we really want to lock arms with our customers on and take them through that all the way from day one where i'm cooking for the first time to i'm my own certified outdoor grill and cooking master and it's important to make sure that uh you know, the products are attractive, that they they are pleasing to look at, that they complement your home. And in particular, with the with the pizza oven that's going to sit on your countertop, I think it's even more important that it be a that it being st- a stunning piece. And I think that uh, I think that the Kalamazoo pizza oven came out beautifully. Right. Just so you know, you guys have me a pizza. It's probably my number one food <laughs> source, but I have cooked fish in it. I've, I've done a mm-hmm. I've done a casserole. I have made bread in it. So it certainly can do a lot more and it does it well. So good point to everyone. Talk to us a little bit more too. We talked again a little bit about this, but talk to us more about your cabinets. Yeah, our cabinets, if you, um, maybe we can pull up the uh, that image with the gaucho. Yeah. Um, our cabinetry is really part of a holistic system 
with our refrigeration. Um, so it is meant to be a seamless appearance and it is a modular system as we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It clips together, it's easy to install. Everything's on its own leveling legs. Everything comes fully assembled. But we have two design series. We have this one that you see here, we call it the signature series. And then what that pizza oven was sitting on top of is our Arcadia series. They're two different aesthetics. But in both cases, the refrigeration and the cabinetry are one. The signature is our full overlay stainless steel look. The handles for the refrigeration are totally integrated. The, the doors are totally integrated. So it really is a complete system. And from a design standpoint, you're choosing between the aesthetics of signature or the little bit stronger design statement or more bold design statement of Arcadia. Arcadia is available as basically mixed materials. Uh, stainless steel is evident throughout on Arcadia, but you're available to do nine different powder coat colors. You're also available to, you're, you're able to do it with Ipe wood, which is just stunning. And that's what the frame of that Shokinin Kamado grill is made out of. Uh, so the mixed materials are very nice, but the cabinetry, we have so many different pieces. This is Arcadia in a, in a charcoal gray powder coat. Uh, those panels would be swapped out for Ipe wood if you wanted the more natural look. Uh, but it's a very clean design approach, very cohesive design approach when you're working with the Kalamazoo kitchen because of the way all the under counter appliances blend in as well. Correct. Yeah. And we show it in Boston in stainless. We show it in our Framingham store in the Ipe. When I did see the Ipe inset, uh, in the middle, it is, it really is stunning. It's, it's, it's beautiful. So I, I'm in agreement there, but it's great to know you have all those options. And one of the most noticeable or notable things about the signature series cabinetry is it is fully weather tight. So there is a seamless welded rain gutter around every door and drawer opening in signature. Uh, so if you're going to be exposed to the elements, you're someplace with real weather. Uh, signature is, is where you're going to want to go to keep everything dry. If you're in a more uh, less rain prone environment like Southern California or you're under shelter, our, Arcadia is going to going to be good, but it does not have the rain gutter that Signature has. Great. Great point. That is great. Final question from us. What is the future of outdoor cooking and what comes next for Kalamazoo? Oh, goodness. I, I can't <laughs> say what comes next or they'd have to kill me. But uh, <laughs> one of the things that that we that we've seen that that I actually enjoy keeping an eye on is we've seen um it got accelerated during the pandemic a bit is bringing restaurant style cooking home and i think the outdoor kitchen is the best place to do that because you can work at higher temperatures you don't have to worry about how much smoke you're generating you can cook with a live fire and actually do smoked food um things like the gaucho grill have become much more popular for us over the past couple of years. And I think that that's going to continue other specialty interests like tandoor cooking, you name it. People want to be able to bring the, the specialized gourmet cooking home and really pursue their passions and interests. I think that's going to continue to grow. Yeah, well, I, I, I will say, um, you know, I, I, and I'm sure I can speak for Fran. You know, we appreciate you guys being on and really, we appreciate you guys not sacrificing quality when it's so easy to try to do that and chase everybody else because they're just it's a race to the bottom in price and quality it feels or at least in quality for the fact of profit and you guys just really haven't seemed to have done that um and you continue to push with innovative product and and uh and that's really is the difference you know for the folks that really want it and you know and it's funny I would say to yourself, you know, um, we, you know, Gene had made a comment in here that, you know, it's, it's beautiful guys, but it's not for everyone. And I don't think anyone here would disagree that I would say this though, I would not be a Kalamazoo customer in my, in my normal sense. I would say, man, maybe I can't afford one, but I would also say after cooking with one, one, uh, uh well, more than once, but I think if you're on the fence, you got to come to one of our stores and give it a try. <laughs> yeah, that burger. We'll go walk. We'll, we'll, we'll have a nice walk around the show. And 45 minutes later, we'll come back. And I bet you get a pretty moist burger. You might be like, well, maybe it is a good investment. <laughs> you know, Dennis, because yeah. you said it, you, you, you positioned it as an investment and it is, you know, and, and speaking philosophically, when you're talking about products that have 25 year transferable warranties and you have the people who create it, sign it, there's a level of pride that goes into that. But when you look at the actual delta of cost between a Kalamazoo hybrid fire grill and another, for example, and you amortize that difference over 
the even the warranty period, even though it's a lifelong product, the actual difference per use is really not as significant as people think. It is the investment in the long-term performance, the quality and the cooking experience. Is it a front load expense? Of course it is, but if you shift the thinking to it's an investment in the finest made, finest supported experience in outdoor cooking in the world, it actually, the value proposition becomes much, much more uh, palatable, if you will. And that's what we're seeing happen everywhere. And it's a great, it's great for us too, if, if they can, I, I hope, I hope people really do think about that because I, I will just say we, you know, we've been in business this year, a hundred years as a, as a company. And, and we've had so many multiple generations of, of selling people appliances, particularly outdoor grills. And, and, and the troubling part sometimes is you, you educate them up front to spending that incremental cost now and what is the value over the lifetime of these homes that they go into. And I'm talking to people five and six and seven years later, and we're talking about, we're going to rip that thing out. You spent a lot of money. And then they're having to realize, wow, you know, maybe, maybe I should have really thought about this just a little bit differently. I think it's, I think it is, it is probably one of the few products that I think will stand or stand the test of time and, and maybe is, is certainly worthy of a real look and consideration if you're doing an outdoor space. Well, thank you, Dennis. We appreciate you guys. Now you made me hungry. And of course, I started a, a, one of my other diets uh, on Monday. This this show, I was joking, you know, if you watch the shows, you know, I I, I feel like every week I'm like, how am I going to look? Oh, man, you know, I got I got to reel it in. You know, my my weight set tends to fluctuate with the season. But, you know, bathing suit season's coming in. I am locked down for a couple of months. But, man, those grill pitch, pitchers of the gaucho and everything else has been okay. cheap. We got the fish grill grapes. You can make some nice, healthy Yeah, that's true. I have no excuse. I can eat very healthy. Burgers. Come on. My excuse is healthy nobody foods. trusts a skinny grill master, and so I like to inspire a lot of confidence. <laughs> Maybe that's my second prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do want to find uh, some of the recipes and videos that Dennis is talking about, you can look us up at kalamazoogourmet.com. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of recipes there and, and plenty of videos to enjoy as well. And you can find us on social at, at Kalamazoo Grills. Excellent. All right, guys, we appreciate your time. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, Thank you. happy Easter. Be well. You as well. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Again.